Audrey Marie Frazier was born on June 4, 1933, in the Blue Mountain area of Kennington, Alabama, to Lucille and Huey Frazier. She married Frank Healy on May 8, 1951, which produced two children, Mike and Carol. Despite Frank's well-paying job and Marie's secretarial employment, the couple had little money set aside in savings due to Audrey's excessive spending habits, leading to the friction in the marriage. Unbeknownst to Frank, his wife was spending more than they earned combined and frequently engaged in sex with her bosses in exchange for money. Frank began suffering from a mysterious illness, as did his son Mike, although Mike's symptoms, which he said that was due to stomach flu, abruptly stopped when he moved away to attend seminary. In 1975, after returning home early due to his illness, Frank walked in to find Audrey in the bed with her boss. Despite being hurt and disgusted with his wife's infidelity, Frank did not feel he could do anything about his situation and turned to Mike, then an ordained minister living in Atlanta, for advice. In 1975, May, a short time after a visit from Mike, Frank visited his doctor complaining of nausea and tenderness in his abdomen. Being diagnosed with a viral stomach ache, the condition persisted and he was admitted to the hospital where a test was indicated a malfunction due to the liver and doctors diagnosed infection hepatitis. He died early in the morning of May 25th. Frank's autopsy performed was with Audrey Healy's permission revealed swelling in the kidneys and lungs with the pneumonia and inflammation to the stomach because the symptoms closely resembled those of hepatitis that was listed as Frank's cause of death and no further test was conducted. Frank maintained a moderate life insurance policy secretly taken out by Audrey at the time of his illness that she redeemed for $31,140. Three years after Audrey took out $25,000 life insurance policy on her daughter, Carol, $25,000 accidental death took effect in August 1978. Within a few months, Carol began experiencing trouble with nausea and was admitted into the emergency room several times. A year after following the insurance policy on her daughter, Audrey gave Carol an injection that she claimed would alleviate the nausea. However, the symptoms only worsened, with Carol in inducing numbness in her extremities. After medical tests found no disease, Carol's physician, fearing the symptoms were psychological, had her undergo psychic testing at Birmingham Caraway Methodist Hospital. There, Carol secretly receiving two more injections from her mother who warned her not to tell anyone about the shots. I'd like to ask you what happened between the time you left John at the motel and the time you got to Blue Mountain at your old house, if that's true. Can you answer me that? Hey, Marie? Marie Healy, are you here? No. Oh. Marie, what happened to you? What happened when you left John at the motel?
Did you walk through the woods over the mountain? Marie, will you talk to me? I kind of understand how you could let living a good life control you the way you did. I was 20 years old when you passed away. Do you regret what you did to John and your daughter and your son and your mother? Can you tell me what happened? It was two or three days after you left John at the motel. Who was you with? Did somebody hurt you? What happened to you? Your plans all went to hell, didn't they? Your escape plans. You ended up dying because of it. Did John help you? Or did he hurt you? Did he, did he get mad at you because you had told him your plans to escape? John, I heard you got killed a couple of years later in that motel. Marie, what happened? Did you walk over the mountain in the woods to Blue Mountain? They said you died of hypothermia. Is that true? I mean, even in the wintertime, Alabama and Aniston don't get that cold. Something else had to have happened to you. Did the police kill you? Or did John kill you? Okay, Marie, I'm gonna go. It's a some storm. I need to get out of here. I'm gonna come back and talk to you, okay? Okay. Rest in peace. The night Dr. Carroll was admitted to the hospital, her physician said she was suffering from malnutrition and vitamin deficiencies. Adding that, he suspected heavy metal poisoning was to blame for the symptoms. Panicking, Audrey had Carol discharged from the hospital that afternoon. The following day, Carol was admitted to the U University of Alabama Hospital, where Audrey was arrested for passing bad checks. They were written to the insurance company that insured Carol's life insurance, causing that policy to lapse. Physicians there investigated on the possibility of heavy metal poisoning. 
noting that Carol's hands and feet were numb. She had nerve paralysis, causing feet drop or foot drop, and she had loss of, of most of her deep tendons and reflexes. The physicians noticed lines on Carol's nails. Forensic tests on the samples of her hair were conducted by the Alabama Department of Forensics. Forensic Science on October 3rd, 1979, revealing arsenic levels ranging from over 100 times the normal level close to the scalp to zero times the normal level at the end of the hair shaft. This indicated that Carol had been given increasingly large doses of arsenic over a period of four to eight months. That same day, Frank's body was exhumed and upon examination, showed between 10 times and 100 times the normal level of arsenic. It was concluded that both Frank and Carol had suffered from chronic arsenic poisoning, with Frank's poisoning being fatal. Has anyone seen this woman? Authorities search in 19 states for missing suspect arsenic killer. The identifying mark is a scar on her knuckle. The FBI search has been conducted in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Georgia, Florida, North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, Virginia, Maryland, New York, Connecticut, Nebraska, Missouri, Arkansas, Texas, New Mexico, Utah, and Washington. Here is Marie Hilly's grave. It just rained here, so I hope it don't start back. Marie? I'm back. Just want to see if you'll talk to me today. I guess the elf is for Frazier, which is her maiden name. And there's Frank. I 
I think his little name was Albert. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Ain't nobody out here walking around. <laughs> okay, Marie. I'm here. I want to find out if you're going to talk to me today. I need some answers. I want to find out what happened between the time that you left the motel room when you was on your furlough to see John and the time that they found you on the back porch of your house that you grew up in, in Blue Mountain. Can you tell me? Marie, hey, it's Cindy. I Okay, I'm here to talk to Marie Healy. Audrey? Yes, my name is Cindy. Okay, Marie, are you ready to tell me your story? You trapped? I know you are right now. I just need to I need to find out what happened between the time that you left the motel room and the time that you froze to death in Blue Mountain. They said it was three or four days. What happened in that time? Was there someone with you that was you by yourself? Did you walk over the mountains to get to Blue Mountain? Is that why you are uh, hypothermia? It was in February and it was very cold, I guess, and raining actually. If somebody helped you escape, can you tell me your name, their names? Did John help you? Or was he supposed to help you? The plane going over. Flying real low. Marie, I understand that you were wanting to better yourself in life. And that that's what drove you to do the things that you did. Even to your own children. And the father of your children. I'm only here to find out what happened in between the time of the motel and when they found you. I'm going to walk over here to your mom and dad's grave, which is right up above you. Hi, Lucille. Hi, Huey. You know, they said that Marie poisoned you, Lucille. Is that true? Did she poison you? I'm good. How are you? Did you ever know that she was poisoning you if she did? Yes. I'm sorry that your own daughter did you that way. Something must have happened to her that made her come out.
the greed of money. You know, the devil does use money like that to make people evil. The desire, the love of money. Lucille, do you know what happened to Marie? I'm waiting. Did I call you Lucy? I'm here to try to find out what happened to Marie. The reason that she died the way she did. Can you tell me? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for talking to me. Marie, are you still here? Can you manipulate the words of this box right here? This, I know you probably, cell phones were just coming out at that time. This is actually a cell phone. This is an app. Okay, sorry about that. <coughs> you guys, my battery died. So I decided to take this opportunity to get out my spirit box and see if she can't talk to me better through this. Talk to me better through this device. It's, it's Cindy. I'm just here to get some answers. Is this Marie Healy? to me so we can talk. Are you here? Frank, did you know that Marie was poisoning you? Did you know that that was what was wrong with you and it wasn't liver failure? Spirits here that can talk to me. And the Hillary, Hilly, or the Fraser family. Frank, this is your chance to speak. I'm giving you a voice. I want to set things straight here in Aniston, Alabama. You know they're calling Marie the Black Widow because she killed you. 
That's what they're saying. Is that true? Did she poison you? Frank Healy? Yes. Can you talk to me? I don't know how much longer I can stay out here. They may run me off. So can y'all hurry up and talk to me? Marie, here's your chance to set the record straight. Can you tell me what happened? What made you die in the way you did? Look, it's a mystery to everyone. Nobody can ever find out what happened between the time you left the motel to the time they found you in Blue Mountain on the back porch of the house that you grew up in. Can you tell me? Tell your story. Marie, here's your chance. This will probably be the only chance you get to tell your story. The lockdown. Lockdown. Marie, can you tell me your story, please? I want to let everybody know what happened to you. I'm curious. I want to know what killed you. What made you freeze to death? Did you did you walk over the mountain? Did it take you like three to four days? I understand that maybe you walk, walked over the mountain to keep from anybody seeing you. But why would you go back to the place that you were born at? Black. Black Widow? Yeah, they're calling you the Black Widow because they're saying that you killed Frank. Did you do that? It's been 18 years. same age as your daughter Carol was when you started poisoning her, okay. according to them. Can you tell me, if, if you're here, touch this box right here to let me know that you're here. Can you do that? If you got anything to, at all to say, tell me now. Even if it's not answering my question. If this is Marie, can you say your name? Tell me your full name. Use your energy or use mine. Tell me your name. Frank. Frank. Hey, Frank. Did you know that Marie was poisoning you and that's the reason why you died? That's what they said. Is that true? Frank, are you still here? I'm 
I might not understand what you're saying right now, but when I play this back on the video, I'll be able to understand it better. And I can tell your story. Frank, I can tell your story too. You guys want to set the record straight? Marie, do you want to admit to what you've done? Or allegedly done? Yes. Hello? Marie, tell me your story. Marie, tell me your story. I'm not trying to spend all day out here. So if you need to tell me something, tell me now. Okay, thank, thank you for talking to me. I hope you're at peace. But if you did what they say you did, I'm pretty sure you're not. But you have to stay here. You cannot follow me. Rest at peace, Frank. I know you worked hard to support your family. Just to end up having your wife kill you. Rest in peace. Goodbye. This way, and at the top of the hill, if you go to this top of the hill and take a left and take another right, go two streets down, and take another right. The oldest cot and cotton mill houses that there yeah, are. I think that's what it was a mill house. That's what I was just saying. I'm thinking that they lived in an old mill house because I'm pretty sure that her husband. Uh, not Marie's husband, but her mother's husband, her dad, uh -huh. worked at the cotton mill at right. that time. Because everybody that lived up here at, during that area, well, it, mill. it worked at the uh, mill, yeah. Right. So if you go through here, um, at the top of the hill by the church, and take that right, them are all old mill houses right there. And um, there's one that's condemned. It might be it. Could be. I'm thinking that it might be tore down too. You know, it might be on one of those open lots out there. But, you know, they could have kept it up. Right. And... I think all the houses that are down this way are still up. So oh, okay, yeah. I wish I could actually find out, you know, right. the exact address. Well, you can stop and ask some of these old people that are down there on that street, and they'll probably tell you. That's, that'd be great. I wish I could. Right, well, it's good seeing you. You too. I'll see you later. All right, so that was a, a friend of mine that I actually worked with here a while back. So we're going to... Okay, look, there's one right here that looks to be pretty old. Uh, actually, I think all of these are pretty much abandoned. I don't know, that one might not be. It looks like somebody might be living there in that one. I don't know. Like I said, you can't tell. Alright, so she said.
Audrey was still incarcerated on her bad check charges when she was arrested on October 9th for the attempt to murder her daughter. The Anderson police found a vial in her purse, test, tested it, which revealed the presence of arsenic. Two weeks later, Frank's sister found a jar of rat poison which contained 1.4%, 1.5% arsenic. On November 9th, Audrey was released on bail, after which she registered at a local motel under assumed name and disappeared, while a note was left behind indicating that she might have been kidnapped. Audrey was listed as a fugitive. On November 19th, there was a break-in at the home of her aunt. A car, some women's clothing, and an overnight bag were missing from the home. Investigators found a note in the house reading, Do not call police. We will burn you out if you do. We found what we wanted and we will not bother you again. On January 11, 1980, she was indicted for her husband's murder. Investigators found that both her mother and her mother-in-law, Carrie Healy, had significant but not fatal traces of arsenic in their systems when they died. The remain of Sonia Gibson, an 11-year-old friend of Carol Healy's who had died of indetermined cases, causes, in 1974 were also exhumed and examined, but were found to contain only a normal amount of arsenic. Gibson was one of the many neighbor children who had fallen ill after drinking beverages that had been given during visits. that you probably have a lot of people that trust to talk to you. But I want to try to set the record straight. I want the truth. Can you tell me the truth? How did you die? Did you really freeze to death? How did you get here? How'd you get here? How did you get here at, your, at this house? Was this your home place where you grew up? Maria, is this you? You would have died right here. Maybe it could get run off from here. Maybe not the one the other way. I'm just trying to find out the truth for you. Did you do everything that they said you did? Audrey Marie Hilly. Are you here? Show yourself. Are 
Are you at peace or are you in hell for the crimes that you committed? There's a lot of traffic now, I'm sorry. Okay, well, I hope you're talking to me because I can't understand right now, but I will later. Marie, if it's you, say your name. Say your name. Tell me what year you died. Tell me what year you died. Can you tell me what year you died so I know that it's you? stuck here on this land where you died at? <laughs> okay, I gotta go. There's too much traffic. Thank you for talking to me. Stay here. We'll get to the bottom of this. All right, y'all. That's all I'm going to be able to do because the traffic is so bad. And I'm afraid these people are going to come home and run me off. That's embarrassing. All right. Y'all stay, stay cool and peace. Love you. She first traveled to Florida where she met a man named John Greenleaf Holman III. She was using the name Robbie Hannon. They lived together for more than a year before she married Hannon Holman on May 29, 1981, and took his last name. The couple moved to New Hampshire. She frequently talked about her imaginary twin sister, Terry, who supposedly lived in Texas. Late in the summer of 1982, she left New Hampshire, telling her husband that she needed to attend a family business and to see some doctors about an illness. During this time, she traveled to Texas and Florida using the alias Terry Martin. During the trip, using the alias Terry Martin, she called John Holman and informed him that Robbie Holman had died in Texas, but there was no need for him to come to Texas because the body had been donated to medical science. On November 12th, after changing her hair color and losing weight, she returned to New Hampshire and met John Holman, posing as Terry Martin, his, her deceased, his deceased wife's sister. An obituary for Robbie Hammond, I mean Holman, appeared in a New Hampshire newspaper, but aroused suspicions when police were unable to verify of any information it contained. A New Hampshire po state police detective submissed that the woman living as Terry Martin was in fact Robbie Holman and had staged her death. That hunch paid off, and shortly after police brought Terry Martin in for questioning, she confessed to being Audra Marie Healy. She was returned to Alabama to face trial, and 20 years she was quickly convicted and sentenced to life in prison for her husband's murder and 20 years for attempting to kill her daughter. Audra Marie Holman began serving her sentence in 1983 and was a quiet, moderate prisoner. This good behavior earned her several one-day passes from the prison. 
She always returned on time. In February 1987, however, Hilly escaped after she was given a three-day pass to visit her husband, John Holman, who had moved to Aniston to be near his wife. They spent the day at an Aniston motel, and when Holman left for a few hours, she disappeared, leaving behind a note for Holman asking his forgiveness. Her escape prompted an inquiry into the prison system for long policy. This time, she was missing for a long four days after Marie vanished from the motel and some police who were responding to a call about a suspicious person went to a home and found her. She had apparently been crawling around in the woods. Her body was drenched by four days of frequent rain and was also feeling numb after being exposed to temperatures which were dropping into the low 30s. She was taken to a local hospital and underwent emergency treatment for hypothermia. While she was being treated, while she was being transported to the hospital, she suffered a heart attack and died. All right, guys, so sorry about that. I got another phone call. This is the back of the motel. So I can go into the motel. They actually rent these little areas out. She was telling me that they like tore down the wall in between two rooms and made a little motel. Where am I going to go Alright, so this is the motel that Marie Healy and John Holman stayed in when she was in during trial and uh, after she went to Tutwiler prison she got out on a furlough and I'm pretty sure that it's one of these and I'm pissing get out I'll show you the inside of these. <clears throat> I can't remember what it was called back then. I'll have to look back. Okay. I got pictures of this also, so. in here. Anybody in here? Toilets behind there. Ew. Spider webs. I don't know exactly which one. Only the door's not on here so I don't know what number that was. Let's see, so it goes 9, 10, so this will be 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. This will be 3. Hello? Anybody in here? Want to talk? Marie Hilly, are you here? You want to talk? There's a highway right there, y'all, so it's going to be loud. Hello? Marie Hilly, can you tell me which motel you stayed at? Your last place that you 
were before you died. Oof, this is creepy. This is three of them. I guess. They all shape the same. That one's locked up. That one's locked up. The other day I came out here and there was some chickens in this one. Hello? Hello? Any spirits in here? This is a two bedroom. Hmm. <laughs> Didn't know that. Is that a room? No, it's plastic. Marie Hilly, are you here? If you are, you can speak to my camera. Just let me know that you're here and say hi. This is Marie or something. Can you move that wire? If there's any spirits here, can you move that wire? It's okay. had your chance. I'm afraid I'm gonna catch something in here or get bit by a spider or a wasp. Oh my god, there's wasps over in here. Ooh, now I'm itching. Anyway. the rest of them are being semi-remodeled. Oh, there's a dead kitty cat. Poor baby. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna walk over here to the office. See what we can see. I doubt if I can get in it. Hello? Did anybody stay in here? This must be the people that ran the office living area. the one that the people paid at. It says ring bell. I don't know if you can see in there or not. open, but I don't know if I want to go in. Okay. Mm 
Hello? I'm just here to talk to one spirit, and that's Marie Hilly. But if anybody else wants to speak, you can. The budget in is what it's called, was called. Red snake's gonna be in here too. Any spirits in here? Okay, so this is the sign that says budget in. That's what it was called. Okay. I'm not staying in this stinking place. It stinks. God, it stinks. But this is the office. I'm sure, it used to be a roach motel back then. Because she was, Marie was bitching about it. Not being I left my car running, so I'm trying to hurry up. Somebody could run off with it. Okay. I got something, y'all. Yeah. I'm not sure if I did or not with all the highway noise. This is the motel that Marie Hilly and John Holman, Holman stayed at when she ran in 1987, February. Peace. Love y'all. idea of about how long it took her to get here, if the story is true. I had to run my window down because I got my hair off because it was loud. Alright, so. I've never known this area to be called Blue Mountain. It's kind of confusing to me because all of the articles say she was found in Blue Mountain. This is a highway here, and if you turn right up there where that car just turned, you'll be over in the Blue Mountain area. But I'm going to turn this way because that's a sketchy neighborhood. See how far it is from that place where they were calling Blue Mountain? I had been over to Scott's Groceries since 19, had it been 87. Um, it was, it had just gotten dark and it was raining and I turned on to Dogwood Avenue, or started to, and there was a lady standing there on the corner and she flagged me down 
and asked me if I'd give her a ride. And I told her I was just going up to the top of the hill to where I lived. And she said, well, that's okay. Let me let me ride with you. And I, I didn't know who she was. I didn't know. I mean, it was dark. And, you know, just, you just don't let strangers in your car. So I just rolled my window up, went on home, didn't think any more about it. And then I saw on the news a couple of days later that that following morning after I saw her was when they found her passed away from hypothermia. And I felt kind of bad because I didn't give her a ride, but I may not be here if I had, so. And your sister was friends with Carol, with she has, you know, went, no, I went to school together. No, um, I don't know how, I think Carol's significant, significant other was a nurse. And my sister was a nurse. I think that's how they knew each other. Oh, okay. okay. And you went over to Carol's house one time? Yeah, with, with my sister. I didn't know who she was. And she, uh, later on, my sister said, Carol's going to be on Geraldo. And I said, why? And she said, you don't know who she is? And I said, no. And she told me who it was. And I said, oh, okay. But Carol was really sweet. It's the only time I ever met her. She was really, really nice. Just made me feel at home, you know, if she never said anything bad about her mother. Um, just a super nice lady. Okay, well, thank you. You're welcome.